Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. And if you've been following me for a while, you may be familiar with my Perfect Shower Gel formula that was published back in 2020, and then the revised edition of the Perfect Shower Gel that was published last year around this time. This formula has been very popular over the last four years. Lots of you have made it. There is something that happens with this formula with some of you that I wanted to address in this video today. So some of you might know where I'm going with this because there is one small change or tweak that some of you have made to this formula that have made a big difference in the end result. So I wanted to share with you what that looks like when you make that one small change. This has been a question that's come up a lot from a lot of you over the years. So I thought it was about time to just share with you what the formula looks like when you make it as is and what it looks like when you make that one small change that we're gonna be addressing in today's video. By the way, the Perfect Shower Gel formula and the revised edition can both be found over on my Patreon campaign along with many other shower gels and body washes and hundreds of recipes and tutorials all in the hair care, skin care, candle making and soap making areas. We're coming up on our fifth year anniversary and that's very exciting to me. We've built a great community of makers and it's a great way to connect with me and other people. I hope that you'll check it out and see what thousands of other makers have come to really enjoy about my campaign. All right, everybody, let's get started. All right, so in the original version, you guys saw that I made a fairly big batch of this formula back in 2020 when I shared it with you on YouTube. And then in the revised edition, I shared with you how to make a surfactant paste or stock that you could then draw off of to make smaller individual batches like this. And today all I've done is taken the original formula and I just scaled it down to 100 grams. So we're just gonna be making a small 100 gram batch of this formula today. So the change or the difference that I keep referring to comes into play right away. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and weigh off our surfactants. So the first surfactant I'm gonna weigh off, usually the way that this formula is written I wrote it with sodium cocal sulfate noodles, otherwise known as SCS. That is a solid surfactant derived from coconuts, very mild, it has a high foam and lather, uh, a fairly low pH, you can see it in a lot of shampoos and body washes. And over the years, lots of you have subbed out the SCS with sodium cocal isothenate. They are similar, but they're not exactly the same. So sodium cocal isothenate has a little bit lower of a pH, and sometimes people will swap out the SCS with SCI because the pH is a little bit lower on the SCI. It's a little bit gentler of a surfactant, still derived from coconuts, but it has a higher fatty acid content. And sometimes people just wanna make their formula sulfate free, which the sodium cocal sulfate obviously has sulfates in it. And so they will just make that swap or sometimes it is just that that's the surfactant that they have on hand. They don't have any SCS, so they use SCI. Sometimes people just don't know the difference and they end up using this one on accident. So again, it has a much higher fatty acid profile than SCS, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So we're gonna go ahead and weigh off the SCI. Again, this is the swap we're talking about. Using this instead of the SCS, which is how the recipe was written. Okay, next I'm gonna be weighing off my liquid surfactant. The liquid surfactant for this formula is cocomidal propyl betaine. This is also a very mild, gentle foam and lather, but it produces a great lather actually, but it's a gentle, non-irritating formula. And it's amphoteric, so you can match it with any other type of surfactant. One of my favorites to use. So we're gonna go ahead and add in the cocomidal propyl betaine. Now, the reason we're adding this in together is because we wanna go ahead and melt down those solid noodles. And they will not melt down without a little bit of liquid surfactant or water. So the last thing we're gonna be adding in to phase A is some distilled water. All right. 
Now I'm going to place phase A into a double boiler with a few inches of water, a, sa a saute pan with a few inches of water. I'm going to warm this up to simmer and then we're going to go ahead and melt down the SCI noodles with the water and the cocomito propyl betaine and I'll bring you back when it is all melted down. All right, so it is all melted down now. That solid surfactant has melted into the liquid surfactant and the water. There's a tiny bit of leftover surfactant, solid surfactant matter in there, but that will continue to dissolve. But as you can see, this is a perfectly clear formula as is, and it is building viscosity as it cools. So this is where people will say to me, everything was going great, everything was going just fine. We're sitting at around 112 degrees. And then as it starts to cool, that's where they run into problems. So we're gonna go ahead and add in phase B ingredients to this beaker. As you can see, it's building viscosity as it cools. One of the things about the perfect shower gel formula is that it doesn't require the use of a thickener. As long as you're using a fragrance oil that doesn't thin out your formula. So that's one of the great things about this formula that people have really come to appreciate. So we're gonna go ahead and add in our phase B ingredients. Not all of them though. I'm just gonna go ahead and add in the glycerin and the preservative. I'm gonna save the fragrance oil until everything is cooled because I'm not sure it may affect the final viscosity. So we're gonna go ahead and add in our glycerin. And we're also gonna add in our preservative. Let me just make sure and stir that in and take the temperature before we add in that preservative. So my other videos will go into more explanation as to why I'm using the ingredients that I'm using. So if you haven't seen those other two videos, and you're curious about why I'm using certain ingredients, go ahead and watch the revised edition along with the original. In this video, I'm just going over what happens when you use SCI versus SCS in this formula. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take the temperature. All right, we are cool enough to add in a little bit of preservative here. And give that a little bit of a stir. And we're just gonna allow this to cool down to room temperature. That is when you are gonna start to see what people have encountered when they use the SCI. So right now, it's still a very, very clear formula. It's looking really good. And the original formula sets up to a very clear traditional shower gel type. So I'll bring you back when this has a chance to cool down. All right, so my shower gel has come down to room temperature and it's time for the big reveal. So this is what it looks like when it cools and gets to room temperature. In my house, that is around 76 degrees, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And as you can see, it is much different looking than this clear shower gel formula that you were probably intending to make when you were following the formula. So as you can see, the SCI in this formula creates a rich, creamy, thick formula. It almost has like a pearlescent look to it. It looks very beautiful and very creamy. So there's absolutely nothing wrong with this formula, but if you were going for the clear shower gel look like this, then you must stick with the SCS instead of the SCI. So some people have come back to me after they've made this with the SCI and they figured out what the problem was that they used the wrong surfactant but are very happy with the end result using the SCI because it turns into this lovely creamy version of this shower gel. So let me go ahead and add in a little bit of color and fragrance just so that we can see uh, the difference between the clear one and the opaque one once we add in 
the color and fragrance. Now, I'm using Bubble Bath Freesia by Brambleberry, which is the same as the fragrance that I added to this bottle. It doesn't seem to affect the thickness at all. We're gonna go ahead and add in one drop of this blue, this FDNC blue. I got that from Nature's Garden. We're just gonna go ahead and stir this gently and get the blue combined, all the way combined. And that also looks pretty. So go ahead and get that combined. And there you can see the difference, see? All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit of bubble bath freesia to this formula. This looks like something you could actually put into a squeeze bottle, so I'll probably demonstrate that for you as well. This fragrance seemed to have no effect on the final viscosity, at least used in the original version, so let's see what happens. I'll go ahead and mix that in. And there it is, everybody. This is the perfect shower gel made with SCI instead of SCS. And this is a common occurrence. People will just automatically make that swap when they look at this formula, like I said in the beginning, for various reasons. Sometimes they want a sulfate-free formula. Sometimes they don't have any SCS. And sometimes they just don't know the difference between the two. And then they, um, then I get a question with, oh, my formula came out thick and opaque. And I, the first time I got that question, I automatically assumed it was the fragrance oil. And so my response to that was, did you use the same fragrance oil that the formula calls for? Because the fragrance oil can do this to your formula. If you're using a fragrance oil that reacts with your formula, it can make it thick and opaque. And they were like, the, the patron said, no, I followed the recipe exactly. And so we went back and forth and I asked questions regarding, okay, can you just tell me, take me through the list of ingredients that you use because if you're using exactly what the recipe calls for, it should look like this. So then they said, oh, I used SCI. So that person didn't know the difference between the two and just thought they were the same thing. So that was when I knew that that was the culprit. Um, it took a little while to figure that out with my patron, but we did that together. And then since then, I've had several other people come in and say, I used SCI instead of SCS, and this is what happened to my formula. Some people, again, are very happy with the, with the swap. It just turns out to looking like a very creamy shower gel, a body wash, and the profile is very pearlescent. So I'm gonna go ahead and package this up and then I'll show you a lather test. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and place it into this squeezy bottle here. This is an, if you're ever wondering how to make a creamy, a simple creamy body wash with minimal ingredients, this would be a good way to do it just because it thickens up perfectly. It looks creamy. There's not a lot of added oils in it. That's the only thing um, you might want to consider when formulating. All right, attempt two. It's too thick to go through my funnel, so I'm using a plastic bag to just pipe it into the squeezy bottle. There we go. This is working much better. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put all the contents into the squeezy bottle. So this formula kind of reminds me of the Dove body wash, the creamy Dove body wash. I don't know if you've ever tried that, but it's thick and opaque and creamy. All right. And there you go. All bottled up. And there you go. The difference between one surfactant. So let's go ahead and do a lather test on this one. Okay. So 
I'm just going to squeeze a little bit into my hand. Right away, it's got a very kind of bouncy, creamy, conditioning type profile to it. So the conditioning feeling is coming from the SCI because like I said earlier, it does have a higher fatty acid content. So much like stearic acid, it's going to give you a conditioning feeling. So we're just going to go ahead and test out this lather. It feels very soft. It's a very conditioning, creamy feeling lather. So this would be, you know, again, something that might be considered a mistake in the perfect shower gel recipe but if you do decide to use SCI you're still coming out with a gorgeous gorgeous formula so this tweak may not have been what you were going for you were trying to make the clear gel like that one and you got this it still makes a lovely lovely conditioning creamy dense foaming lather I would probably call this one a body wash versus a shower gel just because it's got a thick creamy lotion like texture to it and it's very lotiony as it lathers so that's the difference and just to let you know not all is lost if you accidentally have used SCI or you you know were thinking about it and all you had was SCI you can still make a very lovely end product making that one swap if you wanted to um, anyway I thought I would demonstrate that for you guys today just because over the years I've gotten a lot of questions on why did my shower gel go opaque creamy and thick versus the one that you made that was clear and shower gel texture so that's it everybody that's the difference between one little surfactant it can change your entire recipe I hope you liked this video. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Please remember to leave me some comments and questions below. That really means a lot to me. Share this video with a friend and why not subscribe to my channel? All right, everybody. Catch you on the next video. Bye. Keep shining.